Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What up, what up, what up? College football previews continue. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. This is Winning Cures Everything. We're going to talk about the Mountain West today. Yes, sir. The Mountain West Mountain Division. Uh, We are recording this at the end of June, but when we air this, it will be July. It is time to roll. Uh, College football coaches are taking vacations right now. They are enjoying life. It's a a wonderful thing. A lot of them are doing football camps. I was about to say, some of these guys, I don't know that they enjoy anything. Saban's probably at Lake Burton. Uh, Kirby's off somewhere, probably in the Keys. Yeah. Uh, James Franklin, he was in Omaha for uh, for Vanderbilt winning the College World Series, all that kind of mess. So, yeah, they're just kind of all over the place enjoying life, trying to get away from it for yeah, a couple of days at least, right? So, uh, before fall practice begins, which is, uh, which is in early August. So, the Mountain West Mountain Division, uh, this show is brought to you by betnow.eu. Use promo code WINNING50, that's W-I-N-N-I-N-G-5-0, WINNING50 for a 50% deposit bonus. Look, great online layout, great online sportsbook. The odds are good. Everything about this is good. They treat us well. They will treat you well. They make it simple. Betnow.eu. You can actually see it down at the bottom on the video here. If you're watching on YouTube or wherever, if you're on the podcast, it'll be in the description. Um, And that does remind me, subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe on Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Spotify, Periscope. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Gary WCE. You can follow me at Chris B. Giannini. And you can follow the show at Winning Cures. Make yourself uh, happy and go to winningcureseverything.com. It's got everything right there. One stop shop. Very simple. Let's go on and jump into this. You ready? Where are we starting? We're starting with the Air Force Falcons. All right. Air Force Academy. Here we go. Air Force Falcons. Went five and seven last year, three and five in the Mountain West. They returned seven offensive starters and seven on defense. They are the number two most experienced team in the Mountain West, number twenty five in the country. So that's pretty good. Sure. Pretty good. Uh, head coach Troy Calhoun. He's eighty seven and sixty seven in twelve years, uh, and he is he's getting the most starters back since going ten and three in two thousand fourteen. So that yes, is sir. a good sign. Uh, five of their seven losses in 2018 were by six, three, four, three, and eight. A lot of close games. A ton of close a lot, games. A lot of coin flips. Yeah. And, la- and we think that older, more mature players find ways to win coin flip games, right? Yeah, I, I think, mean, we think, I think experience so. helps with and, coin and flip games. Schedule. Maybe, well, schedule, schedule helps. Too. Yeah, yeah, true. Um, you got the schedule up in front of you? I most certainly do. Yeah. I, will, uh, I will bring that up momentarily. The last Air Force quarterback to start every game was Connor Dietz in 2012. Uh, Quarterback Donald Hammond, uh, he is great at everything, like distributing the ball. Uh, You know, they they went 17 and 14 last year to Army, or lost 17 to 14 to Army. Uh, He guaranteed a win over Army this year. The dude likes to talk a lot, um, but he, he only got to play in a few games last year. So we'll see. I mean, he went out with an injury. We'll see if he can actually stay healthy this season. Defense was number three in FBS, allowing only 38% of rushes to go for uh, four yards or more. The entire starting defense is upperclassmen. I like this team. I don't like their schedule. I was just about to say I've got them increasing a little bit, but they do have a couple of hard games. Yeah, they they got uh, they got a few. So it, last year was five and seven. Um, I've got them seven and five, and I've got them four and four in conference. Uh, here's the schedule rundown. So they open with Colgate, and then they've got a bye. Uh, then you go to Colorado, to Boise State. Now that's a rough opening. That's tough. And then you've got San Jose State at Navy, Fresno State. I think they win all three of those. Ooh, even at Fresno. Even at Fresno. Okay. Well, no, no, it's uh, Fresno at home. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. And I, I think. You know, Fresno, I think, is going to be pretty good, and we'll talk about them later, but, you know, I, I think that Air Force can get this one at home. Then they travel to Hawaii, and then they get Utah State and Army both at home. I think they lose all three of those. I think they lose at Hawaii, they lose to Utah State, they lose to Army. You do think they lose to Army? Yes. I don't I, think he comes through with this game. I don't think he comes through with that. I think Army is legit this year. Um, 
I could be wrong about that, but man, I, I love that football team. And then at New Mexico and at Colorado State, I think they win both of those. And then they close out with a win over Wyoming at home. That puts them at seven and five for me. What have What have you got them at? I think the same thing. I'm I'm going back and forth between seven and five and eight and four. I, I do like this team. I like that they're more experienced. I like the coach. I, I mean, I could see them. I could see them getting the win at Hawaii. I could see them getting the win uh, against Utah State. Uh, Army was a close game last year, so they. I mean, they. They could easily pull one of these out. But I also think, you know, like married to it, nailed to it. I gotta I'll, I'll go seven and five. I'll, I'll, I'll All right, hedge. so we're both I'll rolling hedge. I'll hedge myself a little bit. Both rolling seven and five then. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. I was trying to look at the schedule to see can I talk myself into the eight wins just to be different. And, and No. No. I want to. <laughs> I, just, I just couldn't do it. All right. Next up, the Boise State Broncos. Ten and three in 2018, went seven and one in the conference. Uh, lost the Mountain West Conference title game to Fresno at home in the snow. It was fantastic. It was glorious. Six Great. returning starters on offense, eight on defense. Number seven most experienced in the Mountain West. Number 81 in the country. Head coach Brian Harson, 52 and 15 in five years at Boise. Uh, he went seven and five in his only year at Arkansas State. Before that, if you've watched this show before then you know how I feel about Brian Harson. If you haven't, I do not like this guy. I I can't I don't understand what he's doing half the time. His coaching decisions make very little sense to me. Boise has got more talent than the majority of people in that league based on what Chris Peterson did. Like they they are the name brand. But he's been gone league. for a while, man. He's been gone for 5 years. I mean, this is this is a hundred percent Harson's team. Yes, yes, I'm with you. But it, the name brand was built by Peterson. Now, yes, I should I should give him more credit than I give him. But I will tell you this: there are Boise State fans that I know personally that are begging for a Power Five school to come and take him. Like they they want somebody different because he always loses that game. Right? It's he's now. You should be happy with what you got, right? When you win in nine, ten games a year, you should be pretty happy with that, right? I just find this ridiculous. That's I, I, I really do. I can't stand. I understand, like, Gary. Like, I get it. Like, I, I know, know you're what an, it is. I know you're an Alabama fan. I get it. I I understand that you think that it's God's gift to the world for you just to win eight, ten games every year, and if you don't win ten games, it's a complete and utter failure. That's just not realistic. You don't think nope. that Boise fans Nobody think the else, same thing? Nobody, that, then they're just wrong. They're That's, just I, wrong. Look, all I'm saying is I think that Boise could be better. Now, could they be worse? Absolutely they could be worse. But when I watch this guy coach... They are winning 10 games a year. Yes, and they went 10-3 and three last year, but... I, in, that's I, not I'll enough. Go on I don't, I don't know I've, what else to do. I've got them winning ten games again this year. I do too. But I'm ten and two. I just I and I don't, I don't know, know how you're upset with that. I don't know what it is about him that I I feel like he should be better than he is. Les Miles was fired for winning nine games. That's that's a fact. Yeah, that happened. I think that's wrong. I think that's objectively wrong. Okay, I agree. I just, with you. I just don't understand why we. Think I don't think Boise will it's ever everyone's fire everyone's God's gift to, to. It's just, it's just your, it's your birthright to win ten games a year, and if you don't, there's the door. Like, Let's see, I, I, don't I don't know how get, you're getting mad about this. Like, at, all I'm saying is that I feel like he should be better. Like, and the people, games and people thought less should have been better, and, and maybe, maybe these guys should be better. But at the end of the day. They're You're still pretty damn good. 18, 19 year old kids, and and you only can control so many things. So if you have a mistake, if you have a snafu in, in coaching decisions or whatever, it, it it's just part of it. Yeah. But like you don't fire a guy and you don't complain about that's, the that's guy. what I'm Forget saying. Forget about just firing him. You shouldn't be complaining either. I'm not a Boise fan. I can complain about this dude all I want to. I can say whatever I want about well, him, yeah, Brian Hart. Say whatever you want. I just, I just, look, I'll tell I just you. think it doesn't make sense to me. They are not going to fire him. That's well, why no. they're saying that they want a power five Somebody team else to, to hire come hire. More. And I'm thinking, man, the guy's winning ten games a there's, year. There's a reason, like clockwork. Yeah, but there's a reason why nobody has come to grab him yet, and you know it. Would he be this successful elsewhere? 
I don't think so. I think a lot of it has to do with the school. And it was it was the Frank Solich thing at the at Nebraska, right? Hey, he's winning nine games a year. Like, we should probably keep him around, but then they said, We like our ceiling should be higher, right? And now I'm not saying that was the right decision, but I'm never gonna fault anybody for wanting to be better. And look where that ceiling took him. Oh no, I, that's what I'm saying. But you I, the I will never is always greener. I will never fault anybody for making a change to try and be better. I mean, I get that to an extent. Like, I'm the guy that always says, as soon as you know you have a losing hand, fold it. But I don't know that this is a losing hand. It, it may not be. I mean, that's the difference. Like, maybe, maybe this year is the year where everything just clicks. But what if, it do- what if he goes 10-2? and two? What if he loses two of these games? Who well, cares? Then it, it'll be fine. Everything it's a will be great. Se- it's an unbelievable can, season. Because he can win another. Uh, but let's let's get back to the the breakdown. Uh, quarterback Brett Rippin, four year starter. Uh, all everything. He is gone. Uh, right. He started for I mean all four years. Like it. That's, right. that, that's he has been Brian Harson's guy. That's right. Now that's going to so, be massive to replace. They have five. Well, in the spring they had five scholarship quarterbacks. With a combined total of ten pass attempts that all suited up in the spring, and we're trying to to figure it out, and we still don't know who's, who's going to be the guy. It's it's going to be yeah interesting now, to see who takes that. Job. I will say this: the entire offensive line and the majority of the defense are returning. There's not a lot of experience depth. Um, I don't know. They were plus eleven in turnover margin last year. Look, they recovered seventy four percent of all of their fumbles, like and not their fumble, just fumbles. fumbles period. period. Uh, which is insane. That that means a regression to the means uh, may be coming. Uh, but, man, they got an insanely friendly schedule. Holy crap, do they have an easy schedule. Uh, let's run through it. Look, I've, I've got them losing to Florida State. I think Taggart and them are going to be a little better this year. I do, too. Um, I do. So losing to Florida State in Jacksonville, but then a win over Marshall at home, a win over Portland State, win over Air Force, a bye a win at UNLV against Hawaii at home at BYU, uh, another bye, and then a win at San Jose State, Wyoming, and New Mexico before I've got them losing to Utah State and then a win at Colorado State. It's just a really easy schedule. And out, I mean, outside of the Florida State game, I mean, there's no reason they realistically couldn't just run that table. I mean, they, we don't know exactly what Utah State's going to be. Correct. Like, well, Jordan and, Love is coming back, but and we still, and we'll talk about we that, still but. don't know the quarterback situation for Boise. So we're right. kind of hedging here. Yeah. I mean, it's at, without a quarterback, I think they win nine games with this schedule and the rest of the players coming back with a really good quarterback. If one emerges, I mean, they, they could go 11 and one. They could go 11 and one. I, I, so, so, I mean, I mean, they they could like if Florida State still hadn't figured out their problems, they could go twelve and zero. What happens to Willie Taggart if that happens? Oh, if they get their brains beat in by week Boise one, week one, they just lose. They don't get brains beat. They just lose the game. Phil, know, if they if they just it. lose and it's like a close Phil, game Phil and whatever, um, let's let's say like, it's if, like how a, about this? Let's if say they, it's thirteen to three, there, or thirteen well, no, no, to ten. There's like a, a there's a difference though. Florida like if, State can't score. Their offense looks bad. If if the offense looks terrible, then it is hot seat time in Tallahassee, which is insane to think about after a year and one well, game. Last year they were so bad though. Yeah, but they were they looked like they didn't have a clue what they know. were doing, which is a far cry from Bo- Boise. Looks like they have a clue, That's right. but they just know the dudes Florida State's going to bring some, out there. Some of the stuff that, that Brian Harson, the guys just, coming off the bus at. At Boise are substantially different in size and speed and strength than the boys coming off of the bus for Florida State. Yeah, those fellas are way bigger, stronger, yeah. and faster. You're right about that. All right, let's All right. jump off Boise. Get you you got them ten and two as well. I got them ten and two as well. We'll move on. All right, uh, Colorado State Rams. 2018, they went three and nine, two and six in the conference. Not great. Uh, returning starters, four on offense, six on defense. They're the number 10 most experienced in the Mountain West, number 115 in the country. Mike Bobo took them to three consecutive seven and six seasons in 15, 16, and 17, uh, but six new assistants, and then you remember he had the nerve damage issue say, yeah, uh, with his foot. And his, um, it made the bottom fall out. Just absolutely, I, it was it was awful last year. Offensive line was terrible. Uh, only two starters returned, so that might be a good thing. Quarterback Colin Hill missed half of 2016, all of 2017, and then eight games of 2018 
with two different ACL tears. Uh, so last year, you know, Carter Samuel, like he was okay. I was about to say like he they, was, he was playing like a competent quarterback. He was yeah. just the the offense put up like some decent numbers, but here was their problem: defense number one twenty eight in passing efficiency, number one eleven in total D, number one thirteen in rushing D, number one seventeen in scoring D. The defensive line has improved in the offseason. The offense should be fine so long as Hill stays healthy. But, man, this D has to improve under uh, under defensive coordinator John Jancic. Uh, the schedule has no gimmies. No. And while I would like to see them get better, remember Mike Bobo was up for, like, SEC jobs. Yeah, I was about like, to He was say, in the talks was, for, like, moving to Power 5. Yeah, he was, he was in that consideration. But I don't see it. No, I don't I, see it. I don't at think all. they can get back on the wagon. I got them three and nine again. I got them three and nine as well. I can't, Two and six in I, conference. I wanted, I wanted to see them improve. I just couldn't find the win. Well, that's I, so. My three wins are over Western Illinois yep. at New Mexico and UNLV. Yeah, I was just about but, to say the, they've got three that I think are. are they're gimmies, li, but, listen to their non-conference at, against Colorado in Denver. That's right. Uh, at Arkansas and then Toledo at home. Yeah, and I don't think they're beating Toledo. They just, they just. Not, I mean, Toledo can put up points with the best of them. You exactly. Def- you're gonna roll out a a a, a triple. And Toledo's digit, got a better defense. A triple digit style defense up there. That's, you're you're that's in the hundreds thing. and everything. And then on, on Let top Toledo of that, Toledo come in there. They drop a hundred on you. Here's the conference schedule, right? So at Utah State, San Diego State, at New Mexico, at Fresno, UNLV, Air Force, yep. at Wyoming, Boise State. I don't know where the wins come from. I mean, UNLV is is a complete mess. You know, yeah, you've you've got a couple of just gimmies just because they're they're bad, but it's it's going to be tough. It is definitely going to be tough. Yeah, New Mexico, I got them beat New Mexico. Let's uh, let's uh, we, we, so we both got them three and nine. I got them three and nine. Uh, let's move on to the New Mexico Lobos. Okay, three and nine last year, one and seven in the conference, seven returning starters on offense, only two on defense. Number eight most experienced in the Mountain West, number 91 in the country. Head coach Bob Davey, 33 and 54 in seven years, is somehow still the head coach uh, after scandals and two straight three and nine seasons. I That makes no sense. Uh, new offensive coordinator Joe Daly from Liberty, who had the number 34 scoring offense last year, number 46 total offense uh, at Liberty last year before Hugh Freeze came in and wiped everybody out. Uh, he is going to try and blend a spread option with a triple option. I don't. I've I've seen people try this before. It's what Willie Fritz is trying to do, basically. Trying yeah. uh, at Tulane, but but they already run the triple. Yeah, that's the difference. Is you're you're already you already have this one gimmick. So adding the other is might is, be a little confusing. Hard, might be, but it's not impossible. You're adding. Two completely different new gimmicks to an offense that seems to be incompetent. Yeah, is that fair to say? Yeah, um, that's, that's going to work out well. Now check this out: quarterback Tevaka Tuioti. I'm really yes. glad you're good at these names. He was impressive in only two uh, two and a half games before injury last year. Four out of five of the offensive linemen are back. Ton of speedy skill guys, which should work great in a spread option. I was just about to say, if you um, got a spread option, you got speed. You should be okay. Yeah. Uh, new defense coordinator, Jordan Peterson, uh, formerly the safeties coach. So they hired from within to revamp a defense that was pretty bad. Needs to make the defense more aggressive, uh, but it is really tough to make a defense aggressive when there is such limited experience, right? If you got guys that really don't know what they're supposed to be doing, it's their first time on the field, that's a problem. So you can't really be aggressive in that spot. Uh, let's go through the schedule here. I've, I've got them 2-10 and 10 this year. I got them. Golly, man! Are we good on on this yeah, as well? I got, I got them two and ten. I got them regressing, and and I'm gonna tell you this. I, I almost took read off the schedule. I don't know. I, don't I got I, I so another win. I'm they open with San or, or Sam Houston State. Uh, yeah. So I got a win there. I got a win there. They play at Notre Dame after a bye. That's a loss. New Mexico State at home. Yep. Rivalry game, whatever. New Mexico State isn't that good. I got a win there at Liberty. Loss at San Jose State. Loss Colorado State at Wyoming. Hawaii at Nevada. Air Force at Boise State. Utah State. I don't see how they beat any of those teams. Like even even at San Jose State sounds hard. Like they could feasibly win that game. Yep. 
and then get to three and nine. But what is the difference between three so and nine again? So this is one of those situations where I don't have specific wins. I think they win one of the rivalry against New Mexico State or San Jose or San Jose State. State. But I don't think they win both. Yeah, like I've, I, I've got. I them. think if they win one, that's their Super Bowl. They've got two W's real early. They're gonna lose the next one. If yeah. they lose that one, they say we only got one more win on the schedule. We got to get it. Yeah, and I—that's th- my logic behind the two and ten. But I—I'll tell you this: I don't know where they get it between. Oh, I don't either. Like at the end of the schedule, you know, at Wyoming, Hawaii, at Nevada, Air Force, at Boise State, and Utah State. Those are all yeah. significantly better teams. That's right. And so the schedule was not kind to them. I've got them two and ten. You got them two and ten. I got them zero and eight in the conference. Bob Davey probably going to be packing his bags. I would imagine. I, I was wondering. So, and then we don't want to spend too long on these videos, but. All these guys taking it now. If you're promoted from within for the defense is one thing. You're taking an OC job, trying to do something really complicated and really hard here. You got to know you're looking for another job next year. Are you more trying to showcase what you can do for your next job? Well, I'll say this: so, so New Mexico runs a lot of triple right now, anyway. Um, so him trying to come in and bring in the spread, like. Yeah, they they just they they ran the option. It just wasn't very good. Well, I was about to say they so, run it, but, but they the, don't the know spread how to option. Run it. Yeah, well, I guess maybe they know how to run. Just yeah, they know how to run that. It. They're just not good at it. Like they, okay. like Army, like and check this out. Navy last year ran the like they run the triple option. Well, they run it every week. Yeah. But they went three and ten. They weren't very good at it last year. Yeah, but Army, they know how to run it. They just didn't have the dudes. Like Navy's see, been doing it forever. Army ran triple forever. That's right. And then you bring in the new coach, and it's a completely different game. Okay. So, I mean, you, you see the point here. We've been a long time on New Mexico. Yeah, that I'm happens sorry. sometimes. I, I didn't mean to take us down the rabbit hole. We got, uh, we got like eight minutes left before we hit our 30-minute mark. We got two teams left. Okay. Utah State Aggies. 11-2 and two last year, 7-1. and one. Fantastic. Love this team. Uh, two offensive starters back. That's it. And then seven on defense. Number 11 most experienced in the Mountain West. Number 124 in the country. That's the only reason yeah. I got the record I got is because they're, they're just turning over too many people. Yeah, it's a lot of people. Head coach Matt Wells, he is now at Texas Tech. So the really? brass decided to pick up a former coach. This is another reason why I have them yeah. progressing a little bit. Gary Anderson. Uh, Wells left basically no experience no. behind <laughs> No. I mean, it's... Uh, he said, oh, somebody's going to hire me now? Perfect time to take that job. Yeah. And it's... Now, I will say this. Quarterback Jordan Love? Oh, no, no, yeah. He's back, and he is a friggin' superstar. When when you don't have to replace the quarterback, it does help hide yeah. the transition between the new coaching staff. I think he's smart. I think he pick up a new system if they run a new thing. If they run the old and thing. And I don't, I don't think they're going to change a whole okay. lot on it. Um, 3,500-plus yards on offense. They got, they 39 got touchdowns. So that's 32 passing and, and seven uh, rushing. It, look, they lose four out of five offensive line starters. Their top three wide receivers, their top running back and tight end, both left early for the NFL draft. The defense returns a lot of experience in the front seven, but only one starter back in the secondary. Offense probably regresses a little bit because they were the number two scoring offense in the country last year. That's going back. Um, the defense should improve under Anderson. Uh, they were number 51 in total D in, in 2018. Anderson's bread and butter is defense. Uh, the schedule is insanely more difficult this year than it was last year. I think they've still got guys. I think that Gary Anderson can coach. I've I've got them at seven and five this year. I got them five okay. and three in the conference. I've got them even better than you. You got them more. Rest, I've got them eight and four. Eight and four. Now here's here's where I am. Okay, a loss at Wake Forest, a win over Stony Brook. A loss at San Diego State, a win over Colorado State, a loss at LSU. So that's two and three to open. Then I've got a loss to Nevada at home, a win at Air Force, a uh, a win against BYU at home, at Fresno State. I've got them losing, and then I've got them beating Wyoming, Boise, and at New Mexico at the end of the year. Like that is a murderer's row there, and I, I've got them winning some, losing some. I think seven and five would be a really good season for a team that is number 124 in the country in experience returning. True. True. That's a, you You know another team that was like this that we just saw fall apart last year? Uh, Florida Atlantic. 
Oh yeah, they yeah they went where from, where they had like a lot of experience coming back, right. superstar quarterback, all this kind of mess. Had a great season. Yep, like this, went, went like this, eleven yeah. and two last year, and then, and then lost everybody. But everybody still thinks, oh well, they got a few key pieces back, and Lane Kiffin will figure out what to do. Well, you lose that much experience, That's it's tough. sometimes tough. And when the schedule toughens up, yeah, I might be too high. So I mean, eight and four, like it's totally reasonable. I just think, you know, at seven and five, eight and four, there's not a big difference there. No. So, no. Uh, let's finish up. Wyoming. The Wyoming Cowboys. I love this. I love Craig Bowl so much. Six and six last year, four and four in conference. Returning starters, they got four on offense, five on defense. Number six most experienced in the Mountain West Conference, number 77 in the country. Craig Bowl, 28 and 35 in five seasons. Uh, remember, he was other worldly at North Dakota State. Uh, he may be the best player developer in the Mountain West. They won their last four in 2018 to get to 6-6. Six and six. Uh, Quarterback Sean Chambers, he uh, sparked a late-season rally before he broke his right fibula. Uh, he looks the part, and I think having him is going to make them significantly better. The offensive line is young. They got no depth at tackle, uh, tackle though, so they're going to have to do some big-time development there. Uh, number 19 in total defense last year. Tons of experience in the front seven uh, and in the secondary. Look, middle linebacker Logan Wilson. This dude is awesome. Absolutely awesome. You need to watch him this coming season. Uh, he'll end up being an NFL guy. Offense finished number 119 in total O. That's out of 130 teams. Number 119 in scoring offense. Quarterback Chambers should improve that. Road games, though, look, we'll talk about the schedule. Uh, they got road games at San Diego State, at Boise, at Utah State, at Air Force. The team should be good, um, but I don't think that they can improve significantly on their record because of the schedule. So, will here's here's what I'm rolling through. They got Missouri at home, but spoiler, I like Missouri a lot this year. <laughs> yeah, they've so, still got Missouri at home. Yeah, so right. it's it's Missouri. So I, yeah. I've got them losing that one, but then I've got wins. This will be kind of the exact opposite of last year. I got wins at Texas State, Idaho, at Tulsa, and UNLV. So they open up four and one. Great, right? Well, then you get a bye and you go to San Diego State. I think San Diego State's going to be pretty good this year. I've got a loss there, but then I've got a win over New Mexico and a win over Nevada. So. You know, at that point, six and two looks like a pretty good season, right? Well, then you got at Boise State, at Utah State, Colorado State, and at Air Force. Three road games in the last four, all against pretty good competition. I I got them seven and five, which is still pretty good, and I think makes a bowl. So seven and five, four and four in the league. What you got, my boy, Craig Bowl at? I got him five and seven. That's totally reasonable. I just think the the injury prone of the quarterback, the big injury, broken bone. I know people think broken femur is a little bit different. Just, well, it's a fibula. Fibula. But, okay. Yeah. All right. I thought it was femur, but anyway. Um, then then also just no depth on the offensive line. Yeah. If, if guys go down and you've got a quarterback that's coming off a knee injury already, a leg injury, I, I just wonder what what happens to this team. Oh, yeah. Well, especially late when it gets a little more difficult. You know, I, I, I've got them winning the, the toss-up games, but I've got them losing the, the most difficult. Yep. So, and basically every game on the road after uh, after October. So it's, it's tough. It is very, very difficult. All right, you guys know what to do. Go to winningcureseverything.com. Go to betnow.eu. Subscribe on YouTube. All the wonderful things. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.